how could we have been so theologically ignorant? We did not understand grace. But this was catastrophic uh, because it challenged everything. I don't know of anything like this that has ever happened. It was a showdown. It was a Dodge City high noon. It's nothing short of miraculous. It's the whole belief system that's in error. It can't be fixed. It has to be demolished. friends around the world and the United this States the at this moment is having its great strength the big and news today sacked. fell on a world too stunned and calloused by years of history Broadcast. shattering now, what world about news us? the Bible identifies we us. are Israel today the tribulation is coming the very next thing prophesied and it is the implement and the church of what Satan happen to Hitler according to Bible prophecy and how the war will go for America our people have just suffered the worst week of this war the blackest week of the entire century to date. Now you wonder, where are we going from here? The world is in trouble, and the United States is approaching trouble, many troubles. And it's all written in the Bible, and you can't understand it without this knowledge of our identity. Now haven't you always heard the teaching that we're saved by grace? Oh, my friends, what poppycock. When will we wake up? You have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ but rather a false gospel, which represents Jesus Christ as a smart aleck young man who came to do away with his father's law. It was a time of great turmoil and uncertainty, and he tended to capitalize on that and grab people's attention, but it was based on fear. He'd have you uh, holding the newspaper in one hand and reading the Bible in the other hand. Russia now has the H-bomb. They now have a new type explosive that will destroy a whole nation. Let me repeat. He spoke with authority. He sounded practical, pragmatic, forceful. And who was the man behind this voice? Uh, the man was Herbert W. Armstrong. Well, Herbert Armstrong was a, an advertising man, and he was a gifted advertising man. But one day in the 1920s, his wife said that she had learned that Sabbath keeping was something required for Christians. So he went to the public library, studied everything he could about religion, history of Christianity. Well, in going through all this, he concluded that his wife was right. He came across writings that advanced a theory known as uh, Anglo-Israelism or British Israelism. British Israelism is the belief that the tribes of Israel are the modern day nations of Western Europe, particularly Britain and America, who would be Ephraim and Manasseh. British Israelism was one of his main supports for why he believed Saturday, the Sabbath, should be kept, as opposed to the majority of Christians going to church on Sunday. His reasoning was, well, these are the ten tribes of Israel, they've lost their identity. If they knew they were part of the house of Israel, then they would understand that the Sabbath is a covenant they should be keeping for eternity. Well, Herbert Armstrong began on a tiny radio station in Eugene, Oregon. In 1933, he went on the radio. In addition to that, he started a mimeograph magazine. And don't forget, send your name and your address just right away now, before you forget it, for your free copy of the Plain Truth magazine. To he Herbert began to feel that God had selected him to be his great end-time prophet to tell the world that the United States and Britain were actually descended from ancient Israel. My friends, do you know the astounding, astonishing news that the people of the United States today are naturally, physically born Israelites? Do you if the United States was the descendant of Israel, then America would be involved in the prophecies, the Bible prophecies. And I want to tell you that all this weather disturbance means a terrible famine is coming on the United States that is going to ruin us as a nation inside of less than 20 more years. All right, I stuck my neck out right there.
You just wait 20 years and see whether I told you the truth. God says, if a man tells you what's going to happen, wait and see. If it doesn't happen, he was not speaking the word of God. He's speaking out of his own mind. You watch and see whether these things happen. You see who's speaking to you, my friends. Mr. Armstrong's drawing card was speculative prophecy. He made a lot of predictions about the near future using his keys of Bible prophecy to predict the actual return of Jesus in 1975. People ate the prophecy up and the program became enormously popular. It didn't seem to matter to people though when the predictions didn't come true. Uh, Mr. Armstrong seemed very adept at sidestepping the issue for most part well, people just accepted it. And have we turned back to God's Sabbath? Oh, how we profane the holy things of God. And I want to tell if you the United States didn't begin to turn back to God by keeping the Sabbath, an impending disaster is going to occur to the United States. It is the time of the greatest national trouble on the United States of America that has ever happened. It's coming very, very soon. And so his mission became one of, of, of a warning message to warn the United States and Britain to turn back to God through Sabbath keeping. You're under grace, so they tell you. I say, wake up, my friends. You've been deceived. The true gospel is the gospel of obedience to God. And so many people would hear him on the radio and they would say, well, now there's somebody that speaks with authority. There's somebody that's calling us back to a faithfulness and an obedience to God. There's somebody that takes the Bible seriously. Uh, Herbert Armstrong taught that the true gospel wasn't preached from about 50 A.D. forward. And then he was restoring the true gospel. He reduced Jesus to more of a messenger. He went on to say that the gospel is not about Jesus. Rather, the gospel is a message that Jesus was preaching, and that is, the coming of his kingdom, the, the world tomorrow, hence the name of his radio program. The world tomorrow. The Radio Church of God presents Herbert W. Armstrong, bringing you the plain truth about today's world news and the prophecies of the world tomorrow. So well, I rushed inside and told her to turn the radio on. But when he rushed in and said, it's on now, turn it on, it's different, you'll, you'll see, turn it on. And I turned it on and he was talking about the world tomorrow. And that whole concept really grabbed my attention. I heard that, that uh, radio program and I became interested um, immediately. I sent away for uh, the Plain Truth magazine. People were captivated and as they listened, they believed. And as they believed, they donated. And as they donated, the work of Herbert Armstrong grew and grew and grew. Radio was the dominant media, of course, and you couldn't get away from Herbert Armstrong uh, as a religious broadcaster. And it was very easy to be attracted to his style, his demeanor. And so uh, a church began to be born. He began to receive letters. And the letter said, I like what you're saying. I believe what you're saying. None of the churches around here teach this. Where can I go to church? Herbert Armstrong said, well, the radio is your church. Go 